Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler, I'm here with Georgia. As you can see we've moved to a new home. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 4th and the 11th of March 2017. Now we began March with a ton of energy, a big need to push forward, not so much uh, tolerating, we don't have such a long fuse we can get angry, we can lash out, we can be impatient with people and with ourselves. And what I'm talking about, of course, is the conjunction between Uranus and Mars and Aries. It's about, you know, getting forward and getting our own way. And rebellion comes up to the table. And rebellion can be a wonderful thing, a wonderful thing, because Rebellion is what changes things and better things, better things, and, and really causes evolution. But if we're not wise with our rebellion, we can throw the baby away with the bathwater. We can produce an action that is unsustainable, that produces a reaction that is non-beneficial for what we wanted to achieve. For instance, let's say I strongly believe in the Palestinian cause, okay? And in order to um, in order to assert that and cause attention to it, I go and cause a suicide bombing or I hijack a plane or I choose a violent way. What I cause is a reaction of fear, anxiety and anger. And instead of people supporting my claim, which can be just, I cause an opposite reaction. Much in the same way, both in our private life and in our collective environment, we can see those kinds of upsets, those kinds of reactions, those kinds of provocaturing. Aries is a provocateur. Aries is the goddess of mischief, now considered to be a goddess that is a feminine force that puts the unconvenient truth in front of people and it's hard for them to swallow. The great lesson for Aries is to learn how to provide that truth in a way that can be swallowed by others so the message can hit home. And that's what we really need to do. And we really need to watch our energy levels because that Aries, uh, Uranus and and, and uh, Mars conjunct opposing Jupiter squaring Pluto wow this is a combustion of energy almost unlimited al almost limitless and on the other hand we have the Sun conjunct Neptune and that's a passive influence and that's an outer-worldly influence, and that's an influence that wanna makes us that wants to make us escape into our own world and curl within our own inner homes, and be passive and imaginative and daydream. And this could provide a kind of um, swing in which, on the one hand, we take ourselves to extremes, we work too hard, we push ourselves to exhaustion. And then, we, all we want to do is get home, lie down on the sofa and forget about everything. Curl up within ourselves. And if we don't want that swing to be active in our life, we have to be aware of these influences. Not push ourselves to extremes on one hand, and know when to plug ourselves into our chargers on the other. And when we need to, plug out of it and not let passivity and daydreaming become something that we abuse instead of utilize. Other than that, there is very intense, unstable energies in the sky all through this month. On the 10th of March, the opposition between Jupiter and Uranus is going to be exact. I want to remind you that this cycle started at the end of 2010 beginning of 2011 by by Georgia with all the social revolutions the Arab Spring Occupy Wall Street all across the world 
And right now, the planets that were conjunct are in opposition. This is a watershed moment. This is the time that we things fall into place, that we understand what it is we need to do. And there is personal responsibility we have to take in the group in order to secure our future because nobody is going to take care of that for us. Other than that, on March 30th, we have the square between Pluto and Jupiter exact. And that's a very unstable energy that we're feeling already all through this month. It's a time of poli Pluto is connected to politics and, and, and uh, raw materials and anything that is underground and Jupiter is connected to our philosophy and to our truth and to expansion. When these two forces collide, we can get political upwards, political unrest, both in the parliament and outside the parliament, in the NGO, uh, in the NGO arenas, non-governmental arenas. And we can feel it both collectively and personally because on the one hand we have this Jupiter that wants to stay optimistic, that wants to move on, that wants to sail away into better, more adventurous places and expand and be free and find out the wonderful philosophy that this world has to offer, that this existence has to offer and not meddle in the emotional, sticky mud that sometimes can be what real life is. On the other hand, we have Pluto taking us down into our emotional body and saying, hey buddy, if you truly want to be happy and expand those uh, horizons and consciousness, you need to address this darkness because if you don't address this darkness, there wouldn't be any light. And they're in conflict, these two forces, and they create a lot of tension. And they can literally create reactions not only from people in our environment or from within ourselves, but also from the environment itself. Our relationship with nature can change. And this is a time of earthquakes, both metaphorically and literally. This is a time that we can see more natural disasters. And behind all these reactions, there's a truth, Jupiter, that needs to be discovered, needs to be brought up to the surface, Pluto, needs to be understood on a deep emotional level and adapted. Other than that, on the 4th of March, Venus is going into a retrograde movement, she's going to be in Aries and then in Pisces and she's going to go out of retrograde movement on the April 15th, conjunct Chiron square, uh, square Saturn. We're going to talk about it in a second. But any retrograde allows us to see the subjects that the planet is in charge of from a different light, from a different angle. And if Venus is in charge of love, relationships, satisfaction, income, our assets, our bodies, and our five senses. All of these subjects and our beauty and harmony in life, all of these subjects are subject to change. So in a Venus retrograde, a lot of the harmony and beauty and aesthetics around us change. If uh, we are in a relationship, things can change and we can separate. If we're separated and, and, and we're bachelors, things can change and we can meet somebody. Or it's just that, you know, something in the relationships, in, their, in our relationships needs to evolve and change. Relationship changes. Same with love. Same with the way we make our income or our essence. Whether it is our car and our house in the most uh, personal level, or the beauty and harmony in nature in the most global uh, aspect of things. And the way I make income can change, my amount of income can change, and all these changes 
come to produce a feeling within us, a feeling of lack or a feeling of satisfaction. Heightened satisfaction, lower satisfaction. Either sorrow that something changed and thus understanding how precious it is for us in our life and how we should cherish it and honor it and strengthen it more greatly in our life in the future. Or on the other hand, a feeling of release, a feeling of uh, the tension fading away and satisfaction flowing in because of a change. Now things in a Venus retrograde change, they will never be the same, but they need to evolve into something new. I remember that the last time that Venus was in a retrograde, the beautiful garden I had in my previous home was totally demolished by the landlord who was beginning uh, some construction. Of course it was for a good cause, to make it an even more beautiful place, but the first step was demolishing everything. And it was, really, it was so, so sad. And it took a very long time for that garden to bloom again and never was what it was back then. Never became again what it was back then, but it grew into something beautiful, but different. Beautiful, but different. There's a lot of fire in the sky. There's a lot of cardinality in the sky. And the, the, the most important words for this month is objectivity and consistency. A little logic can take you a long way forward. And the planet that comes to our assistance this month the unlikely planet that comes to our assistance this month, the unlikely character from our heavenly cast, is Mars. Mars in charge of our lower chakras, our uh, male instincts, the masculine within all of us, our initiative, our defensive mechanisms, our energy, and of course, also everything sexual and our desires within us. Mars is going into uh, Taurus. And Mars doesn't like it in Taurus. Mars needs that energy full forward, you know, that needs that, that, um, that feeling of the charge, of the storming ahead, and what Taurus does is really settles Mars down, makes him much more consistent, much more logical, much more practical. And Mars doesn't like it, but it takes away some of our um, impulsivity. And that's a very good thing for us this month. What I forgot to tell you about the Venus retrograde before is that when Venus goes out of retrograde on the 15th of April, conjunct Chiron, the wounded healer, and squaring Saturn, the Lord of Karma. If we don't deal with the subject, with the Venusian subjects, well enough, within this retrograde period, at the time that it ends, on April 15th, we could feel our pain again, and we could feel like we did the same old mistake again, and karma is knocking on our door for the who, who, know, who knows what numbers, uh, what number of time. I mean, again, we can feel that again this reoccurring, reoccurring cycle is in our lives. But if we act with a very cautious and very logical mind regarding decisions that are in the realms of relationships and love and money, income and our assets and our bodies, then at the end of this retrograde cycle, when Venus is conjunct Chiron squaring Saturn, we can gain much insight and a lot of wisdom and because of it get hegemony and a higher stature, a higher status, a more stability regarding these subjects and how we address them 
in our personal lives. So we talked about Mars and the fact that it going into Taurus on the 9th is actually good to lower down the flames, to lower down the flames. And remember that Taurus makes Mars more consistent and more settled and can help our action through life be so as well, but it makes him also much more stubborn, not wanting to go out of his way. And that could be a problem. Maybe the most important uh, point of the week is next Sunday on the 12th of March, there is a full moon on the 22nd degree of Virgo. Now, as in every full moon, the moon is opposed to the sun. This time the sun is conjunct Chiron, again the wounded odd healer, squaring uh, Saturn. <clears throat> what does this say? Well, basically it says that this is a time for reckoning. This is a time to look very well upon ourselves first and foremost. Upon our life, our patch of grass first and foremost. Also regarding our, in, our interactions with people around and other people in our lives and, and their influence on us, whether it be positive or negative. But first and foremost on ourselves, this is a day of reckoning. This is a time that we need to grow up, take responsibility and get better and more sophisticated with what it is we are doing. It is about becoming more perfectionist and, and really asking ourselves to set the bar higher and understand that the small things that we do, all the little details, are really the dots that at the end of the day create what, Georgia, what? At the end of the day, create the big picture. It's about choosing a healthier life, a less stressful life, knowing how to deal with the tension and the stress better, and creating a life that is healthier for us and our environments. And because we're talking about Virgo, there's also an aspect of service understanding that it is our role to better our environment and the people around us and, and our society and nature through what it is we are doing to give service not to try and educate not to come from a place that is paternalizing but to make it out of a place of service to the world to our environment, karma yoga as we call it. So this is really a time to adapt all of these themes into us and into our lives. Lastly, Georgia, you talk a lot today. <coughs> Lastly, uh, this week, the days that have a connection between the moon and Saturn, these are days to be warmer, more affectionate and loving towards ourselves and towards others. So we have one day like that, that's the 6th of March, March, and right after that we have two days on the 7th and the 8th that the Moon is in connection with Mars and Pluto, and these are days we need to watch and be extra careful uh, uh, regarding not getting caught up in the drama, not being too emotional, not being too agitated or angry, staying away from um, arguments and fights, not letting the whirlwind of our emotions get us caught up in the drama and become much more logical and objective. So on the 6th warmer, on the 7th and the 8th, chill it down. <laughs> I want to thank you for listening. As I said, it's Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and of course for lectures, private lessons, private consultations or any question you have, I would love to hear from you. I would love you to comment on these videos and share them, tell me what you think, and thank you for listening. On behalf of Georgia and myself, have a beautiful week. Bye-bye.